Hey guys, what's up? In this video, we're gonna be testing the OnePlus 9 Pro camera. There has been huge hype of the OnePlus and the Hasselblad tie-up. And in this video, we're gonna see whether the Hasselblad tie-up is worth it or not. Hi guys, I'm your host Shomit Seth, and without any further ado, let's get started. So I have been using the most hyped camera smartphone of 2021, the OnePlus 9 Pro 5G. As we approach the end of this year, I thought of testing the cameras on this smartphone. I would also be uploading the photos on Drive and the Drive link would be in the description in case if you need it. Hasselblad had no inputs in designing the cameras of this smartphone. They gave their contribution in the software side mainly color calibration. Let's start off with a quick look at the camera specs. The camera module sticks at the top left corner of the back frame. The primary camera gets a 48 megapixel Sony IMX789 sensor with f1.8 aperture and optical image stabilization. Next we have a 50 megapixel Sony IMX766 sensor with f2.2 aperture for the ultra wide camera due to its focusing capabilities the wide camera works as the macro camera. Apart from this there is a 8 megapixel telephoto camera with f2.4 aperture and 3.3x optical zoom. Finally, there is a 2 megapixel macro camera. 8K30 and 4K60 video capabilities are available on both the primary and the ultra wide camera. 4K120 FPS is available only on the primary camera. You can shoot slow motions at 1080p 240fps and 720p 480fps. At the front, we have the age old 16 megapixel Sony IMX471 sensor with f2.45 aperture. These are some samples from the primary camera and definitely the quality of the photos is really great. Colors are balanced in most situations. The best part of the camera is that it automatically identifies the setting and captures the photo accordingly. Though in some situations, I thought it struggled with the exposure. But overall, all these pictures match the DSLR level quality for sure. One more thing I noticed was a slight delay in processing. Like if you're trying to capture a moving object and you clicked a picture thinking that you got the right moment but after processing the pic is completely different from what you saw while it was processing. This error can be fixed easily with a software update. These are some samples from the ultra wide camera and this camera is definitely my favorite. Bigger sensor is always better and with the sweet touch of Hasselblad color signs, boy we are talking some quality. The best part of this camera is that there is no lens distortions in the final output making it very natural. This camera captures incredible details and this is probably the best wide angle camera I have used in a smartphone. In some situations I do notice that the center of the image had more details than the edges which is a con for the wide angle camera but overall wide angle camera performed great in most situations. These are some samples from the telephoto camera. You get a 3.3x optical zoom and you can zoom up to 30x. Although up to 10x the photos are usable but they still have noise and since it's a 8 megapixel sensor there is a very low detail in these photos. 30x photos are just not usable. The best part is that there is optical image stabilization in telephoto which is a necessity when it comes to digital zoom. These are some samples from the macro camera. There is plenty of details in these photos making the macro camera on this smartphone one of the best in the Android market. The focus is accurate, no artificial sharpness and colors are balanced. The best thing is that whenever you take your phone close to the subject, it automatically switches to super macro which makes the user experience so much smooth. These are some samples from the monochrome camera. For a 2 megapixel sensor, the details in the photos is really great and I wasn't expecting such good photos from this small sensor. This mode is for those who shoot a lot of old people portraits. These are some samples from the front camera. Although the front camera is not impressive in the specs, but the photos are decent and usable. But the price at which this smartphone is offered, I think they could have worked on the front camera. A better sensor and more megapixel would have worked. These are some samples shot with the nightscape mode. The optical image stabilization combined with big sensor enable the camera to perform really great in low light. The photos have really punchy colors even in low light and there is a lot of detail captured by the camera even at dark conditions. These shots are taken with the pro mode. They look fantastic in terms of colors and they have been taken by just manipulating the shutter speed. 
This is taken with the portrait mode. The edge detection is slightly slower. It takes few seconds to isolate the subject from the background, but the final output looks really great. These are some video samples shot in 8K 30fps. This smartphone can pull off DSLR like video quality with just a press of a button. I have uploaded a short film which is entirely shot on this smartphone in 8K which you can see by clicking on the card above. Overall the cameras on OnePlus 9 Pro are really impressive but I think OnePlus overhyped the cameras and the Hasselblad tie up. Color performance is unmatchable for any other Android phone in the market. It can be said that OnePlus aimed for the moon and reached at the Everest. With that being said, we come to the end of this video. Before we end this video, I would like to thank you all as we just hit 1500 subscribers on the channel. Keep supporting, keep sharing and I will see you in my next video. Bye.